went downtown just to read my pain. Well, I went downtown just to read my pain. You know that's right. Well, I ended up by walking in the rain. Yeah, so the corner, uh, I think it initially started when I came into your class. I yeah. saw you had a poster of the water, yeah. and I was like, oh, this guy's legit. So, um, and I, I just... I quickly shattered that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, After the first class. But, notwithstanding uh, the interest yeah. in David Simon and so the parents and Yeah, so I just finished watching The Wire, I think that summer, and then I was inc- like very interested in it, um, and then I sort of thought going into film I'll be able to talk to him about it and stuff. There are two kinds of kids walking in this building. Stoop kids, corner kids. No, stoop kids. They're the ones that stay on the front steps when the parents tell them. The others go down to the corners. You follow drugs, you get drug addicts and drug dealers. Get your hands up! Get down! But you start to follow the money, and you don't know where it's going to take you. You think I have time to ask a man why he's giving me money or where he gets his money from? The game is out there, and it's either play or be a play. It's Baltimore, gentlemen. The gods will not save. And then when it came time to the EE, um, I had rewatched The Wire again, and my brother, older brother, who was also interested in it, had shown me uh, his other show, The Corner, mm-hmm. which is a miniseries. Yeah. And I thought, um, because The Wire is such a broad and huge show that you did your master's thesis on, yeah. after reading a bit of that, I thought, wow, it's a, it's kind of hard to tackle, and what kind of aspect can I focus on? Then after I watched The Corner, it was a lot more, it was more of a kind of uh, simplified and not really watered down because it's actually more intense than, than The Wire. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. just the fact that it follows one family and it has one sort of recurring theme through it, mm-hmm. it's a lot easier to tackle in like a 4,000 word essay. So I thought, okay, I'll take a look at this and then watch it a couple times and I thought, okay, there's something I can write about here and just have to find out what. So, yeah, so it's because the, the corner's kind of dramatically more condensed and also more intense in some ways, right? Yeah, well, yeah, the, the scope is smaller. Like, in the first season of The Wire, they talk about... I thought it's really focused on the drug trade. And, um, but it doesn't... It still is kind of like a cop show mm-hmm. where there's the cops and then there's the criminals. And there's still that kind of dynamic, yeah. but in the corner, it's you know they have the um, handheld like long shots for almost the whole series. Yeah. It's only focused on this one family who you know they're living in inner city Baltimore, and we're basically we're in their family, we're part of them, and it's not that we're kind of on the cop side or on the criminal cool. side from the wire. So it's a lot more uh, up close, and then it kind of gives yeah. Yo, oh, Kurt, you've been out here on Monroe and Fair a long time. <laughs> Who you telling? I've been on this corner since that Lambo was over there was a goddamn twig. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a soldier. Yeah. So I guess you Yeah. Um. Yeah, because I mean, like The Wire um, is pretty successful in moving beyond a kind of a uh, a reductive moral universe but there is still like a sense of sight you're stealing from yeah. those who themselves are stealing the lifeblood from our city you are a parasite who leeches off just like you the culture man. of drugs excuse me what i got the shotgun we got the briefcase so on the game though right you follow yeah. you know however value neutral the drawing of those sites um what do you think the corner loses by virtue of not going beyond the um, 
the lives of uh, just the people in that situation that maybe the, 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 that maybe the wire adds. I think it was lost a lot on its viewers, the, right. the corner, because obviously it had less of a viewership. No one's ever heard of the corner. Yeah, you Honestly, wrote about this in your paper. They, they, they didn't really make any concessions to uh, no, no. conventional t television. Because right? it, was, it was in those kind of golden years of HBO where they were like, guys, we're going to give you this and we trust you, Dave Simon, you've made you know, Homicide and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. Um, you've made other stuff with us here, you can have full autonomy of it. And he had just finished writing this book about uh, focused on this family at the corner as well. Mm -hmm. And he thought, well, I can make that into a piece of film and hopefully this will get some viewers an event, you know. It, it did get like critical acclaim and stuff like that, and it won an Emmy. Um, but beyond that, because it was so focused on this one family, and because it's from the first episode, there's scenes of you know crack fiends and people shooting up heroin, and yeah. it's it's not very um, like user friendly to get sure. into. Like the wire is a little bit more kind of a few more concessions. Yeah, yeah, and and it's also just from a more of a bird's eye view. Yeah, but because literally like you have. The filming in the corner is just extremely simplistic. It's just handheld camera, mm -hmm. and they don't. They do very minimal editing. It's just um, we're just looking at the life of this totally messed up, um, drug addicted family living in Baltimore. Yeah. And you, you wrote about this, I think, a bit in your your paper. Was, did you see that as a kind of matching of form and content? Yeah. So there's the yeah the content. Well, the form of the, the handheld camera mm. and yeah. that intense uh, style of filmmaking is, I think it matches the, the content and that living in that environment is so intense and there's no break from it. Okay. And the only, you know, the only break they have from it is, um, you know, when they shoot up heroin at night or something like yeah. that. So the whole day, you're taking from the morning when they wake up and the whole day is basically just, uh, and they, one of the uh, characters in the series says the hardest job in America is being a crack fiend. <laughs> and because yeah. from when they wake up, they don't have any money. Yeah. So they need to do something throughout the day to be able to get a certain amount of money so they can buy a little bit of food from the corner shop, uh, maybe buy a cigarette or two, a single cigarette, and then get just a little bit more, you know, crack or heroin or whatever it is. I think I think this was one of the first things that struck me when reading your final draft was uh, um, you interweaved um, really nicely elements of conventional film analysis, you know, doing due diligence to the IB's assessment criteria yeah. with like that quite authentic viewer experience. I think you shared that you'd uh, participated <coughs> in the user's kind of relief in those moments where they shoot up yeah. because it's at least less intense than the rest of their day has been. Yeah, you know? like I don't like looking at needles, but then it was like, okay, now we're inside um, you know, Frank's house or whatever, and he's, okay, the music is on and he's shooting up heroin and then it's kind of chilled. And then I wrote about that exact scene at the end of episode four. We're taken right outside and they try, they go like bird's eye view and there's, the director is interviewing someone on, on camera he's interviewing an actor but it's like a kind of documentary yeah. thing and he's like well this is kind of going on everywhere it's, it's like this every night on Vine Street and he's like yeah you know this is just kind of how we do it and stuff like that yeah. and it's, yeah, it's pretty uh, unforgiving speaking of um, that balance between kind of what you were really drawn to and what really interested you and kind of fulfilling the parameters of in this instance uh an extended essay in film. Um, one of the challenges you encountered was that you were pulled in a very um, political, um, uh, critical theory direction in your response, which was a really authentic one to this. Um, and we needed to, to find a way to um, integrate more conventional film criticism. Uh, how did you yeah. resolve that kind of challenge? Um, part of me, when I watched it, I just wanted to uh, talk about what I saw watching it, so mm -hmm. the sort of documentary aspects. But I had to kind of make a thesis and mm -hmm. a research question, yeah. and that took a while, and it, I changed it pretty much every week. But that, but that was a healthy process, having it as a kind of a working thesis that developed with your ideas, right? Yeah, and so I, 
I, I sort of made it into a little bit of a list type of thing where there's I broke it down into genre tropes mm -hmm. um, where it lends uh, from documentary and also television drama mm -hmm. and then I sort of had to contrast that with something else and then that's where I got your idea from reading your essay about tragedy mm -hmm. and the wire this game is rigged man we like the little bitches on the chessboard Yo, this is my corner. I ain't running nowhere. Yeah. And I thought, um, what, what are these genre tropes and deviations from them? What are they doing? And it sort of led me to, to the fact that the corner is like a modern day tragedy where there's no, you know, episodic resolution or even series resolution at the end. It's just sort of what's happening. And that in itself is like a, a massive tragedy. Yep. And so then once I had those two sort of, uh, contrasting aspects so I had the you know documentary uh, television drama mm -hmm. tropes and then contrast that with how does that lead to a uh, tragedy yeah. then I could kind of okay how how can I along the way in this argument then start to analyze specific scenes how does that show that well, your interest in documentary was quite pervasive and obviously you ended up writing um, uh, a treatment for uh, or not really writing a treatment actually, but coming up with a concept and then gathering footage for a documentary for your final film, yeah. uh, your production portfolio that was uh, a lot less bleak. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but a bit like um, The Corner was, I think, a very beautiful matching of form and content. Do you, do you want to speak about um, Tai Long Wai? Yeah, so. With Tyler One, it was just sort of a thing where uh, it was part of my. It was a massive part of my life in the last two years. I've become like a very um, avid surfer, mm -hmm. and I pretty much uh, without uh, on some days I wouldn't go, but almost every day after school I'd go to this bay, Tyler One, yeah, yeah. and surf, and I'd meet the same people every time. I I gained some friendships from that, and the village people I'd sort of meet, and I I knew them, and every time I went. I had the stresses of the school and when we were driving down the hill, just all of those just kind of left behind. And I kind of wanted to show that to, to the school for my, for my documentary. Uh, they're part of the big part of the village down here. Um, so I think they play a huge role. Uh, they really support the surf scene in Hong Kong. I did quite know young. We've been here for about 50 years now. I was born here in Big Wave Bay in the village. I grew up here. My mother came to Hong Kong as a refugee during the war over from China. She had to hike through the mountains to get here. The village at the time here was very small and those who lived here were in small straw huts. She met my dad here and they settled down and had a family. She has lived here ever since. In the 1960s and 70s, there were so many illegal immigrants. Lots of them came ashore here in Big Wave Bay, and we helped them. We gave them food, warmth, and some shelter. All the people coming up the beach, cold and shivering from surviving the ordeal, they took a leap of faith, making the break to get into Hong Kong. Mm. How many of them we took them in. We'd give them a hot bowl of congee before the cops took them away. Even if we sat here forever, we wouldn't be done with all these stories I could share. 